Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all here to the beautiful Philosophical Research Society in Los Feliz for creating a treasure map for the Aries New Moon with Tracy Abbott Cook. We are so excited to have Tracy back here again. My name is Dennis Bartok. I'm the executive director for PRS. Uh, welcome all of you here and those of you that are joining us uh, remotely via Zoom. Um, I would like to thank our dear friend Ann Slichter for introducing us to Tracy, uh, who joined us a year ago, almost, in fact, almost a year ago to the day, uh, for her first treasure map presentation, which was amazing, as I guarantee this one will be. Uh, I have a question. Is there anyone here tonight who has never been to PRS before? Wow, that's great. Welcome. We hope you keep coming back. Uh, and for those of you that have been here before, thank you so much for your support. Uh, PRS is a 501c3 nonprofit arts and events organization. We have a beautiful research library just across the courtyard that has over 30,000 rare books on archaeology, anthropology, uh, metaphysics, esoteric subjects of all sorts, and it's uh, open to the public for research and study on Thursdays and Fridays from 12 to 6. So if you haven't taken advantage of the library, please, you should come and check it out. Um, we do concerts, we do film screenings, we do author talks, performance art events, tarot workshops, magic lantern shows, we do buto dance performances, we do a whole wide range of events that are at the intersection between the creative arts, metaphysics, mysticism, and mythology. Uh, and if you're not on our mailing list, you can go to our homepage at prs.org and put in your email address. And we send out email blasts twice a week about our upcoming programs, some of which you saw here. We have a Sacred Harp workshop where you will learn to do Sacred Harp singing. I have actually seen it performed once many years ago, and it was one of the most hauntingly beautiful musical performances I've ever been a part of. Um, uh, we also are going to be screening Meredith Monk's uh, Book of Days, which is a really eerie and beautiful and surreal feature film, very rarely screened. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you now Tracy Abbott Cook, growing up with astrology in the home. Tracy learned to hand draft charts while in high school. She expanded her knowledge by learning from all of the great astrologers in the 1980s through the 2000s, through books, lectures, and lessons. While she has had private clients and enjoys personal chart analysis, Tracy's primary focus is, a, is lunar month forecasts and mundane astrology. Since 2008, she has maintained her astrology blog Tracy Astro Salon, where she posts her astro insights and offers up guidance during this remarkable, transformative astrological era. Tracy lives in LA with her husband, son, and her Taurus cat. They all live very busy lives, except the cat. Will you please join me welcoming once again to the stage of PRS, Tracy Abbott Cook. Thank you, Dennis. It's, I'm so happy to be here tonight. I was, I'm was i really happy to follow the trailer for The Mask. <laughs> that was fantastic. I am all in on a 3D movie with those kind of effects. Um, so I'm thrilled to be here. And let's uh, let, hang on one second. I'm going to see if this all works. Oh, God. It, God is great. It works. OK. So I'd like to um, begin. This is a photo from Ferndale. 
And I want to begin with this. uh, Let us acknowledge the land where we are tonight is the land of the Gabrielino, Keech, and Tongva. A mile to our west is a year-round stream where pre-European indigenous people convene for tribal meetings. These tribes continue to demonstrate talents and gifts amidst a backdrop of ongoing marginalization and oppression. They are worth celebrating. Land acknowledgement is only one small part of supporting our indigenous communities. I always like to start with that. So here is our program. <clears throat> I'm going to do a history of treasure mapping. What is treasure mapping? Map manifestation examples. When do we make our treasure map? The astrological landscape that we're in right now. What do we do between now and the treasure map? And then we'll have some Q&A. I think this, will, I think this program is about an hour. And then we'll have a little room for Q&A at the end. Oh, um, so just wanted to give you guys that info. Um, so, first of all, are there, how many of you in this room know astrology? Do you, are any of you professional astrologers? But you know your chart, right? And you probably, some of you know it enough to know, oh, I have moon in Taurus or something like that. Okay, good. All right. Do you have moon in Taurus? No, okay. Um, okay, I just want to get a feel for the room. All right. Um, so yes, what Dennis said was I grew up with astrology in the house. I learned to draft my grandmother and my mother. They, were, they understood astrology, and then I learned, and then I started drafting charts. And um, I would do my friends, and then I, uh, you know, I would do, um, I, certainly in high school, I didn't have clients. But I, you know, I understood it, and I looked at um, major people's charts, people in the entertainment business, people in politics, just to kind of get a feel. I um, went to college, I majored in United States history, and then I had a very long and rich um, career in the entertainment business. And I, you know, occasionally would take a client, but honestly, when you work in the entertainment business, you really can't give that focus to uh, clients. And And for me, I really preferred mundane astrology, which means of the world. I was just very interested in what the outer planets were doing. But I still was very plugged into astrology. I learned from a lot of great experts, a lot of great uh, um, astrologers in the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. And um, and certainly, my emphasis where I really like to hang out is in the eight lunar phases of the moon. And we are right now in the Pisces new moon. Did people know that we're in the Pisces new moon right now today? Okay, good. Yeah, my non-moon and Taurus person over there knew that. Um, Okay, so in 1990, I was introduced to the work of astrologer Buzz Myers. Buzz was a gifted astrologer in Euclid, Ohio, and then he moved to Virginia Beach. Buzz could peel back an astrology chart like a surgeon. He was a Scorpio, and he also took no hostages when he interpreted your chart. Oh, my. And, but he had a talent for explaining the cycles and patterns of the planets, even for those who did not know astrology. Now, last time I was here, I put this up, and I'm putting it up again. I put that up because I don't even know how many people know what an audio cassette is. Uh, and there is one. And, and Buzz used to send cassettes. And my friend Margaret went, who studied and reported on metaphysics, she, for years, she introduced me to Buzz. And Buzz had these on-time phase workshops, and he would send out these tapes every every month and they laid out the eight phases and um and i did this for years and then in april of 96 bud sent out an aries lunar uh, the aries lunar month and he always knew how to make his lectures fresh and he with new perspectives and on this aries new moon he wanted all his students to make a treasure map and he explained the reason for the map and what was needed what we needed to do and i was sold immediately and I called up Margaret, and I called up uh, Anne, who Dennis mentioned, and I said, let's meet at Margaret's house, and let's just do this. And I, I'll bring the cassette. And so I brought the cassette, and we played it, and then we went out, and we, um, it, and it, well, I said, let's just do this all together. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And then so cutting to the chase, a treasure map is a, is a vision board. But... Now, you've got to remember this was 1996. 
and this predated the vision board zeitgeist that we all know now. And now vision boards are so matter of fact, they show up everywhere. This was, I was watching last year, I was watching the movie You People on HBO, and there was a scene where the fiancés are squabbling, and between them is her vision board. And they never even referenced it, which I just thought was fantastic. It was just there, they shot it, they made sure the board was in the middle, and it's like we all knew. And I just thought that was so perfect, and I love thinking about the set decorator who made that. And maybe they even had the actress make it, just to give it that feel, but I just love it. So in theory, a treasure map is a vision board, and now many people will make vision boards, and they'll be very, very focused, and they will get some of the results that they intended. And I love every successful vision board. But what makes a treasure map different is that a treasure map is made one time in a year, and it's during the Aries new moon. And by making the vision board during the Aries new moon, you are launching into the new zodiacal lunar year. You're tapping the Aries energy, which is powerful. Treasure maps are a juiced up vision board. So words associated with Aries, pioneering, assertive, action-oriented, dynamic, enthusiastic, energetic, ambitious, trend-setting, um, stars, right? Yeah. Okay, you're in Aries. We already had a little pre-conversation. Yeah, all of those, that's right. You know, you're all that. So there's this huge energy when you make, um, when you make your treasure map on the Aries new moon. You're tapping into the astrological energy as a wave. It's propelling you. It's also the time of the year to be selfish. Because, and I will say this with much love and appreciation, Aries always know how to take care of number one. This is exactly what you want when you're making a board. It's all about your wants and your needs. This is Aries. So my two friends and I, we made our maps in April of 96. We gathered, we listened to Buzz, we bought a bunch of magazines and came back and cut out stuff, words, anything that called to us. We finished our maps at home and we did it in the first, we made our maps within the first three days of the lunar month, the new phase of the new month. Now what Buzz said was, if you make your treasure map in Aries, you will start to see the manifestations by the cancer cycle, the cancer new moon, which is three months later. Margaret had an extraordinary map. Within a few weeks, she met the man she would marry. She also had a very specific car on her map, which was technically out of her price window, and she had no idea how she would get it, and bam, she had it by summer. I recall there was also travel-related images, and she did a lot of international traveling that year. For me, at the time, I was single, not dating anyone. I wanted to put a guy on my map, and I went through the magazines looking for a guy, and for some reason, I was attracted to a photo from a Ralph Lauren ad. Now, of course, with Ralph Lauren, who is always on brand, it was a photo of a guy on a yacht wearing something Ralph Lauren-y blue. And I'm not sure why I liked the photo, but I did something, I did, but there was something about the guy that I kind of felt was appealing. The next month I was hired to produce something and I met one of the guys who was part of the project. We started dating and he is now my husband 27 years later. What was trippy and probably why I continue to make treasure maps is that my husband and his family are sailors and members of a, had been members of a yacht club for 60 years, right out of Ralph Lauren land. As Buzz suggested, all this started happening by the new moon in July, the Cancer new moon. So um, obviously the manifestations of the treasure mapping made an impression on me and my friends and we all shared it with a lot of people. At first it was kind of analog, talking about it at coffee with a friend or on a phone. More and more people made maps and had successes. Some people had more, uh, had more successes than others, but all in all people were responsive and found it to be a powerful process. I would not hear from people all year and then sometime in February or March, I would get a phone call, hey, Tracy, when is it time to do that thing? And I would say, you mean treasure mapping? Yeah, that thing. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. 
In 2004, I started talking about treasure mapping to my cyber communities. My son, my son was born in 2001, and I was in cyber groups because I would have such a weird schedule with a baby, and I started heading up treasure mapping with my online communities. The collective process has been so helpful because people would share their own process and wisdom and successful practices. Now, this is a prototype of a map. It's not anyone's real map. I put it here for an example. So nuts and bolts, it's a montage of images. You can get your images any way you want. I used to buy a lot of magazines and now I just get a few for inspiration. Sometimes I see what I need, sometimes I do not, but the magazines can spark something for me and I may then go look for something on the web and download it. I know some people, and I respect them, don't like to use corporate advertising for their creativity, which is totally fine. There, this is such a creative process, you will find a way to get your images. You can use your personal photos, you can draw your map, you can paint it, you can do what you want. This is your map. Also, some people do not make maps on poster boards. Instead, they make cyber maps. They, too, work. Whatever is your jam, go for it. Now, affirmations. I always have affirmations on my maps. At this point in time, I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to write an affirmation. But one thing I would like to stress is writing affirmations in the present tense. Instead of writing, I will be strong or I will be healthy, write, I am strong, I am healthy. Instead of, I will get a career I love, go for, I love my career. Now, if that's hard, to do that present tense, and I can see where it can be, then you may try, I'm happy and grateful that I have a career I love. Sometimes you need that qualifier to get you there, which is fine. If you get stuck, go to YouTube videos on writing affirmations in the present, to, in the present tense. In terms of laying out your map, about a year after we started the maps, and from the, ori uh, the original triad, said, you know what I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use the Feng Shui Bagua this year. I thought she was so smart to make that connection, and I agreed, and I have been doing it that way ever since. The reason for this is if you follow the Baguas, you hit all the areas of life, career, knowledge, etc. cetera. Um, this guards against too much of one thing. If, if you only put work stuff or love stuff or money stuff, you may miss out on other parts of life. And so you can see, I'll, you can go online and get the Baguas for Feng Shui, but you can see how everything is some part of our human experience. I do suggest you put your name on your map and your photo. This is another way to own your map. Now, the power of the process. When I'm in the process of making a map, and I've done it with people, and I've done it alone, but either way, I'm aware that I'm tapping into something higher. After all these years, and as my life unfolded, I know it is my higher self that I'm connecting to when I make my map. There is some type of communing I am doing. I'm very present in making the map. It feels very concrete. I want that. I need this, but at the same time, it feels bigger. I have a willingness to be open to something calling me that I have no knowledge for why it's there. Or maybe it makes sense on one level, but later when the year unfolds, I see it in a new light. This willingness speaks to the Aries, the P Aries, the pioneer. I'm going there, not ex exactly sure what is there, but I'm going there. You see how it all comes back to Aries? So I'm going to give you some examples of maps. And I've spoken to several treasure mappers, and I want to thank them for talking with me and allowing me to share their private goals and dreams with you tonight. I am in much gratitude. So this is treasure mapper number one. You'll see, or if you don't see, because it's too hard to find, I'll say some of these things. She has open to the possibilities of my own home, personal space, sanctuary. Shortly after Treasure Mapper One made her map, a situation came up from in her home and it was clear she needed to move out. A friend offered her an ADU for free. 
She lived there for about half the year. She did not know she would need it, but if you look at those small houses, I think they look ADU-ish, right? They do. And the sacred space where she lived turned out to be the perfect respite that she needed. On her map are also the words, see the world and travel. Again, this was not anything on her calendar. But later in the year, she was asked to accompany a client on two trips. She doesn't live in this state, and one trip was to California, and one trip was to Canada. All unexpected. Both trips were fun. Notice Let's Play is on her map. Also interesting is see, you'll see Reconnect with Family and Friends. One trip reconnected her with lost friends. She also reestablished relationships with an important family member whom she had been disconnected for years. She also has Life Without Pain, Grow and Learn and Relax. When I asked her to sum up this year, she said she felt well cared for. Friends and clients really stepped up, but it was also about her, and I'm quoting, it has been about me taking care of self, me not waiting for others to do things. It was about me doing what I must do. My self-confidence is within. I'm done fighting. I want cohesive relationships with the people in my life. No more off and on. And I think when you look at this map, you can feel and see the sturdy and cohesiveness in her map. Now here's treasure mapper two. Okay, with mapper two, she had important manifestations in her personal life, and they have been very rewarding, nurturing, and very much needed. Her marriage got stronger in new ways, which she wanted. All that is great. But I want to zero in on this part of her map. This is just in the Bagua. This was her work area, which is in the center lower part. And um, I want to zero in on this section. It's obviously focused on writing, and you can see new opportunities, creating worlds of animation, my breakthrough script. Given the WGA and SAG were on strike for nearly half the year, I spoke with her this week and asked, so how's it going? She said that her project, the one she was working on before the strike, is still standing. This is saying something because the studios killed a lot of projects. But in this Treasure Mapper's case, not only is it alive, but the studio also put money in it to get it to the next level. She will be doing an important presentation later this month. And what will be interesting is if they move it up to an official green light before the next Treasure Map begins on April 8th. I say that because if she gets that boost, that will be one of those super late manifestations that could come at the very end of a treasure map year. I had that happen to me a number of years ago where some things were on my map just didn't gel and they all landed the week before the, the next treasure map was gonna start. Maps are, maps are crazy. Now, treasure map number three. I have to say this, last year was an anomaly because we had two Aries new moons. So I'll put that aside. I'll talk about that a bit later. But this treasure mapper used both new moons. She cut images and words on the first new moon, which was in March, and she also cut on the second new moon in April and glued it on April. She and I had a thorough conversation this weekend. Quote, <clears throat> I went into the map without specific goals, no clear intention. I just wanted to feel better and take up my own space. I was open to letting the images just come to me, and I trusted it. At the time she made the map, she was 34, married, two kids, working an ungodly 60 to 70 hours a week. She had a toxic boss. Her husband treated her poorly. She felt like she was off as a mom. She was disconnected from her own value. In that rough personal landscape, she made this map which you can see is filled with inspirational images and words, such as, there is no better time than now, clear your mind and prioritize, a more comfortable work-life balance, make space that matters, 
There are years that ask question and there are years that are answers. That's all in there in some form or another in different little, some of it she wrote, some of it she cut out of magazines. So it's uplifting, connected to something that was m more than what it was her reality. She has lots of visuals, but the one that really called to her, even now when I spoke to her this weekend, was a young girl looking at art supplies. It's in the, it's right in the middle, above Grace. And she was drawn to her because the girl was comfortable in her own skin. She said she felt it connected to her own inner child, which to her represented, I am enough. The map was potent. In July, during the cancer lunar cycle, her toxic boss was fired. This started a whole, <coughs> excuse me, this started a whole series of events. She was bumped up at work. She was now in charge of the schedule. Her hours were normalized. Her salary increased. Her life became more hers. The crazy was gone at work. Once she let go of the toxic boss, she let go of the toxic at home. She filed for divorce. She now has a, new, a set of new coworkers, new friends, none, of, none who know her husband, and she said, I stand in my center with maximum confidence in all my relationships. That's a direct quote. In the children's section of the map, she put an owl. Owls are wise. Before her separation, she never felt she could ask for help, but now she has a whole community who are stepping up and offering support. She said her kids are doing more activities than they ever did before this year. One thing she put on her map was very insightful. Beat your worst financial habits. Somewhere along the way, she had decided that she had bad financial habits, no doubt reinforced by her husband. But as she pulled up all the fiscal documents for her lawyer, she realized, quote, hey, I'm actually smart about finances. I have sound practices. So she has more understanding as to who she is. She said a lot of other things about the map and the manifestations, but overall, she felt this map has helped change her life more than any other map. She's been doing for them for about 10 years. She said, I am more centered, but it's not forced. This is an art for me. And in there, yeah, it's in big words. The art that lights you up. She said, once I participate in these life-changing things as an art, I didn't know I could feel this good. Also up there is home in a world worth living in. She said, I have that now. Now this one is an interesting journey, at least to me. Treasure map four. So this mapper and I had a conversation. <clears throat> you will see, and it's hard for you guys to see it, but it's there, trust me. One of a kind treasure and the words rooted inheritance. A couple months after she made her map, a relative in the family died. She had zero idea there would be any inheritance from this person, and she was surprised when she ended up with a custom topaz and diamond ring, a true one-of-a-kind treasure. Now on, on here, too, are words that say create abundance and stability, find life's true calling, and you'll notice, I think you can see it, there's a big old bee, and there's a woman blowing a dandelion. There's the bee, and the, I'm kind of in the way of the dandelion. Besides the ring, there is some money in the inheritance, so that adds to her stability. When she made the map, she was unemployed. Her previous job folded, and, it's been a, and, it, been a, and it had been a stressful job that did not bring her anything remotely close to joy. She really wanted a job that connected to her essence, her life's true calling. In July, she was offered four jobs in one week, and she almost blew off the last offer because she had said yes to one of the other four. However, she took the meeting, and it turned out to be a job in a watershed project run by her city. Her job is to identify areas taken out of the mowing cycle, then seed it for pollinators. They let the weeds and the grass grow so that the pollinators, bees, can use maybe dandelions, for example, for fuel. 
she had no idea there was even such a job when she made this map. The job provides more financial security and it speaks to her inner calling, which are both on the map, and she loves it. She said this is a dream job. She's been making maps for a long time, and this is kind of, this is important. I'm really happy to share this. She said that in the first year, she put things she wanted and had successes, successes, but now my maps feel different. My map has become more like an oracle. I cut out three times more than I use, and I take my time and use my intuition. Paring it down is the hardest part, but she says she trusts the process. She mentioned to me that the last year she was working at the bad job, and I call it that because, you know, it sounded like a bad job. She was doing inner work and meditations to figure out what she needed. And in a meditation, a hay bale image popped up. She didn't know what it meant. Now as she looks at her map and thinks about the hay bale from a year earlier, she said, hay is really, at the end of the day, a tall grass. That image Th that image, this map, speaks to the oracle experience given where she landed this year. It all makes sense. Treasure map number five is my map. And I used both new moons like the other treasure mapper. I cut images on the March Aries moon and cut more and glued in the April moon. The April moon. When I made my map, I was drawn to a yellow board it is a color associated with the solar plexus. It connects to inner strength. I was not sure why I did it, but I went for it. Years ago, on my drive from job to home, there was on the freeway one of the tallest sunflowers I had ever seen. It was alone near an off-ramp. Every time I saw it that summer, I smiled. It was just a pop of joy. I always think of sunflowers as that, a pop of joy. For some reason, I was drawn to put a sunflower on my map. I also put the word success with a yellow background under the flower, below the flower, I should say. When I completed the map, I could feel joy. The day after I made my map, I ordered groceries, and the delivery gal surprised me with a sunflower. She said, I give it to all my customers. I thought, wow, sunflower is trying to get my attention. Now a year later, I know why. My year had a lot of hurdles and a lot of responsibilities. Lots of loved ones in hospitals, a lot of driving, coordinating, figuring out solutions, making sure I did my best for each of them in a world that was new to me. I have zero background in medicine or health care, but somehow I did it. I had important successes, and even in the grind of the day or the grind of the murkiest situation, I had pops of joy. Those pops of joys kept me going. I always have on my map some language about timing, and this year was no exception. And I write it, I put it down here in the faith corner. And I, you guys can't see it, I, but I'll read it to you. I am happy and grateful that I have perfect timing. Where to begin? I arrived at a hospital when a case manager is available and wants to talk to me. If you've ever been in a hospital looking for a case manager, it is quite a labyrinth. I will show up at a library when the perfect person behind the desk gave me the exact info that I needed, which no one else would have known. A person cancels an appointment, and then I'm now available to talk to someone about something that's important that has just popped up. Or there's a cancellation, and I do as my map says, and it's up there somewhere, Wisdom is knowing when to rest, when to have activity, and how much of each to have. And instead of doing, I just got in bed and watched bad TV. Sometimes you have to replenish your cell with bad TV. I had a year of divine, divine faith and trust, another thing on my map. Now, I cannot lie, we did not increase our earnings in 2023, which is up there in the abundance corner. But in a town with major strikes for five months, we felt fortunate that we survived. We got financially bruised, and it was not our biggest money year, but somehow we survived and didn't have to do what others had to do, like sell their home and move away. So my map did 
tap where it said I am abundant. I also want to say that joining colleagues on the picket line, seeing old friends, connecting with folks, tapped another abundance, the abundance of community. I am an activist for various issues, including public education. I'm a member of many political groups, and I have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of meetings, a lot of assignments. I had successes in those areas, and there were pops of joy. There was also, as it says on my map, a lot of forward thinking. I have, and I quote from my map, I am happy and grateful that the world appreciates me. For sure, I felt appreciated, not just by my sick family and friends, but by others in their own ways. I have the word welcome on there. I was welcomed in a lot of circles. Now also on my map is Storyteller, a journey of self-expression. I tap authenticity every day. I wrote a lot this year. I wrote about my journey in the city and in life. I had many people tell me how much they appreciate my storytelling. This is joyful for me, because if you know anything about writing, you are alone when doing it, and no real sense if anyone gets it. I was co it was confirmed a lot this year that people got what I was expressing. I also have a finished first draft of novel. I'm gonna tell you right now, that did not happen. But my book, which is set in historical Los Angeles, has a much stronger outline and my characters are more fleshed out. Again, speaking of divine timing, there were incredible random ways old LA and my story came to life to me this year. These are clear signs to me that my story needs to get out there and to the universe I say, message received. There are other goals that were not realized, but if I look at my map, I did not give travel what it deserved. I even put a picture of the suitcases in the wrong bagua. I put it over there and it should have been over here. I think I knew last year on some level that this was not the year for me to travel, but I was so pleased my husband and son did go to Europe. And I do have one small trip scheduled the last week of this treasure map year, so there is that. And I have said this before, my maps are clear cognizant. They know something, even if I don't know it. My map guides me. It's as if the map says, don't worry, I know where we are headed and I got your back. So when do we make our treasure maps in 24? Um, so about every 18 years, we'll have two Aries new moons, and that was the case last year. And I am happy to report we are done with that crazy making. We will only have one Aries new moon. And there it is. Uh, April 8th, it'll be at 19 degrees Aries, 24 minutes of an arc. It's at 11.20 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So in the old days, I used to say, we used to say, make your map in the, in the new, make it in the first three days of the new moon. And that was great, and it's very punchy and very potent, but life is life, and schedules are schedules, and people get crazy. And so I just said, okay, we gotta, we gotta open this up. And also people were having results if they weren't doing it on the exact first three days. So they opened it up, and they were maybe getting it done by first quarter moon, which is about 10 days into the new moon. And then some of them couldn't make it by first quarter, but they were doing it in gibbous, which is right before full. <coughs> but they had results. So now what we say is, uh, listen, I would love it if you could do it in the first few days, but maybe not this year, and I'll explain why. But if you do it before the waxing, do it during the waxing moon. Waxing is from new up to full. But if you find yourself at the full moon, which is at April 23rd, you have at 4.48 p.m., now we're at the full moon, don't make a map this year. Because if you didn't make it through the, the waxing, this is probably not your year to make a map. And it's okay because farmers will leave a field fallow a year or two. So sit it out, that's okay. But if you are going to make a map, make it during the waxing phase. Now, this year is special. How many people knew we were going to have a total solar eclipse in the United States? Anybody going to the zone? Well, you can see where it is. I will be going to Texas. I'll be with family, who I think might be on the Zoom of this meeting. I hope so. 
Um, we're looking forward to it. We are going to the eclipse. We went in 2017 to Wyoming to experience it. It's a real trip. If you've got friends or family that live in this zone, go for it. There will not be another total solar eclipse in the United States that goes from Pacific to Atlantic until 2045. So if you can do it, do it. That'd be great. Um, but you don't have to. I'm just saying you might want to. So we're going to talk a little astrology. Let's kind of just prepare ourselves for this. So that I can't do these without going into a little astro. And some people will understand this and follow it a little better than others, but I got to do it. Um, this is the chart of the Aries new moon. And it's got a lot of good uh, Aries energy, a lot of go for it. However, at the same time, there is some slow down energy parts to it that are kind of saying not so fast. The chart has Mercury and Aries near the sun and the moon. Mercury and Aries is a good brawler, so there could be some fighting words. But whatever anger comes up, use it to inform your map. What's really going on with the anger? Is there something missing in your life that you have maybe lived without for too long? Is it time to put something on your map that addresses what's missing? The planets Jupiter and Uranus are pronounced in this chart. The desire to lean into freedom impulses will be strong, and we may be more open to things that are foreign or odd. Thoughts and impulses that at any other time we have maybe normally dismiss, we may consider a place for it on our map. Under not so fast, Mars is in conjunction with Saturn. Mars is the relentless warrior, and he's tangled up with Saturn, who's cold authority. I think many of us may delay making our maps. We may tell ourselves that I am going to make my map on the first day. I am ready. But then when you get there, you have a schedule change, an obligation gets in the way. You're forced to stall the mapping. The timing gets delayed or just cold. The, um, the aspect of where Mars and Saturn conjunct is on April 10th. And perhaps some of us will need to get past that date before we're ready for our map. Saturn, um, Saturn delays, but Saturn doesn't deny. There is a place to just say, let's take a moment. And that, that is in the mix for this, this particular treasure map here. There could be also an overall desire to streamline the map because of Saturn. All of this is fine as long as you are tapping your gut. Saturn and Mars and Pisces know that our guts and intuition are talking to us if we clear out the noise. Are we listening? I do think there might be a lot of people who are drawn to ocean images or trips to beaches on their map. Curiously, the most celebrated aspect of the year and the one of the highlights for the decade is the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus on April 20th. This is a big one. There is something good and practical and pragmatic that comes from this aspect. Jupiter can get super righteous, and in tough Taurus, there could be some digging in on something. But Uranus will never let anyone get too stuck, and I think that, bril that brilliance may show up. A lightning bolt of genius, pragmatic creativity could land on some of our maps. Now, I need to say this. Aries new moons speak to self-agency, tap, um, tapping number one, finding our independence, our path. It does not mean we can't or are not supposed to be in a relationship, but we need to bring authenticity. Tapping that authenticity is the key to the Aries new moon. Great. Got it. Now add the fact that this year we are in eclipse season with the Aries north node. We had our first eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries last April. Now we're having the second one this April. Before the 23-25 eclipse cycle, they come in two year um, cycles, the last time we were here with Aries eclipses was between 2004 and 2006. I remember feeling the lesson of the North Node in Aries when Hurricane Katrina hit. I looked at that news and thought, wow, where is the leadership? Where's that fighting Aries? There was a lot of South Node in Libra waiting for someone else to step up. The importance of finding and being our own leaders is pronounced in this Aries eclipse cycle. This is where we are now for this April 8th Aries, treasure map Aries new moon. 
got it. We're having two rounds of really intense, two layers of intense Aries. And then this treasure map, we have got one more piece of business that adds to the centrifugal force of the map. The new moon, the eclipse of the sun and the moon are on top of Chiron, and all three of them are at 19 degrees Aries. Now, I'm not going to bog you down on Chiron too much. It's a planetoid who has a long astrological story that involves a centaur, half man, half horse, abandoned by a mortal mother, never knew his father, Cronus, a.k.a. Saturn, Chiron became a gifted teacher with many students where he accidentally got shot with an arrow by a beloved drunk student, which he never, and he could never cure his wound, though he spent a lot of time in a cave trying to figure it out. In the end, Chiron gave up immortality so he could be free of pain. Wherever Chiron is located in our chart is where we look at where we can't seem to heal ourselves. However, in trying to heal ourselves, we teach others how to help themselves. I was born when Chiron was in Aquarius, the sign of technology and working with others in group dynamic. Now, they're older than me, but this is the same placement of Chiron as Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Oprah Winfrey. They have their own peaks and valleys for all of us to see, but you can feel the Aquarius, the Chiron and Aquarius with them. The fact I'm even here talking about astrology and treasure map is my Chiron in Aquarius in the 11th house. And if one of you get drunk and hit me with a bow and arrow, so be it. <laughs> At this time in the sign Aries, we are experiencing the power in teaching each other the value of finding independence. The last time the Aries new moon was in Chiron was on March 25th, 2020. Can any of you... Feel March 25th, 2020? It was a week after lockdown. And it was, there was a lot of people talking about independence. Some of them got it right. Some of them probably didn't. Teaching, teaching and working with others, we all tried struggling to find independence. We, we were all struggling to find independence in lockdown, and we had hurdles as Chiron was dealing with with that drunk Hercules, that was the guy who killed him, or shot him. Some got it right, some did not. Now, we're in a different landscape this a April, but there's, there could be a tie back to the spring of 2020, but really, it's how did we tap independence then, and how are we going to do it now, and how did we learn, and how did we heal? And remember, we're all healing each other. Whenever Chiron's, because Ch we have Aries somewhere in our chart, so Chiron is in there. You, you guys, if you know your chart, you can look up where 19 degrees Aries is and just think, oh, there is some healing there. Look at the house. The house will, t will personalize Chiron and Aries. Um, and here's a note. I did this this week before coming to you guys. I had to go back to April 11, 1975, to find an Aries new moon on Chiron and that was within a two-degree orb. That was the month the USA pulled out of Saigon and the war in Vietnam ended. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what this means, but I just thought, ooh, that's potent. Okay. And a little bit more astro, and I'll do this as best as I can. And I'm doing it for a reason, but just bear with me. So we are in an extraordinary astrological time. In the spring of 24, we are nearly halfway through this decade. How the decade started in 2020 will not look the same when we get to 2030. I, don't, I won't go long on these planetary changes, but no, please know that all the slow-moving planets changing signs connect to societal changes. And all of us are here. We decided to incarnate at a time, so, <laughs> so we're all, we should all be saying game on, for this extraordinary time, because we chose to be here now. Pluto. Pluto officially entered Aquarius, and where it will be until 2043. It's a long time. There will be mass changes in technology. Many astrologers noted that it was announced that a computer chip was inserted in the brain of a human right when Pluto entered Aquarius in January of this year. I also took note 
of an execution of a prisoner in the USA with a, with a new technology. This caught my attention because the last time Pluto was in Aquarius, and hear me when I say this, was 1778 to 1798. At that time, the USA went from the Revolutionary War to writing the Constitution. In 1778, France joined the colonists in a battle with the British Crown and helped the colonists with money, uniforms, weapons, and they also sent soldiers. The United States would never have, no, any historian will tell you, we would not have won the Revolutionary War if, if France hadn't come in when it did. Um, but a few years later, also still while Pluto was in uh, midway through Aquarius, there was an unwillingness for the king of France to put a tax on the wealthy, and this combined with crop failures, the people of France were starving and they were paying heavy taxes. They had a revolution, and it did not look like the USA's revolution, and there was also a new technology that was created, and it was called the guillotine. That's Pluto. Saturn will leave Pisces in 2526, and so will Neptune. The last time Neptune was in Aries was 1861 to 1874, and that, of course, was the period of the United States Civil War. The last time Saturn was in Aries was 1998 to 1999. Some of you can think back what, whatever was going on in your life at that time. There may be a callback. In 2026, Saturn and Neptune will form a conjunction at 0 slash 1 degree of Aries. It will almost get there in 2025, but it's not exact until 26. There's an astrologer who I've been listening to lately who I really enjoy. He goes in deep, and I like that. His name is S.J. Anderson, and he's super smart, and he found that the last time these two planets, Saturn and Neptune, were in conjunction at one degree Aries was 4,361 BCE. This is around the time the Great Sphinx was built. And we're getting that aspect in 2026. Wow. Uh, SJ said that uh, in his research, that's when calendars were invented. Uranus will enter Gemini in 2026. And it was in Gemini during the United States Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and World War II. So <laughs> it's a lot going on with our outer planets. Having said that, there is an aspect that's going to come up in, I didn't write the year down. It's, I think it, it might, it's either 26 or 28. It's called a basket. And it's an extra good aspect. I'm, I'm hanging on to that visual. You guys can look it up. S.J. Anderson is, talks a lot about it. But my point in bringing all this up is that there's some tumult and there's going to be a lot of shifts and changes. And perhaps right now, we are making decisions that will impact our future in a more profound way than we even know, except our maps will know. This, could, this which is coming will, could be influencing our maps. So what do we do between now and treasure mapping? Between now and Aries New Moon, we declutter our homes, our offices, our cars, our spaces. We get rid of piles. We sort, we toss, we file. We take things that are broken to be repaired or to the trash. We look at our stuff and offer it up on free cycle or buy nothing. One year I went through my t-shirts that were too small and I picked out each one and sent it to a friend who, thought they, who I thought they would like it. They went in the mail and each friend called or texted and many sent photos of them wearing the shirt. I just knew it would appeal to them. We cleaned the bejesus out of our spaces because as Einstein said, no two objects can occupy the same space. We want clear space by the time we get to Aries New Moon so our heads are clear and ready for our maps and our, and our thinking. Think about clearing our thoughts. How many negative thoughts come up? Consider releasing those thoughts. Enjoy the clearing out. Now, I know I've talked a lot about the astrology, um, and I want to offer up, uh, there's so many great astrologers out there, you guys. You can find them on YouTube. I, Chris Brennan, he does great astrology podcasts. He's on Patreon. I think he's also on YouTube. Rick Levine, he's fantastic. He's an Aries. He's so Aries. 
He's on YouTube and Patreon. Astrology Hub. I also do a treasure mapping with the, uh, Amanda and her people at Astrology Hub. The World Astrology Report. It's a rather new one. Um, I find it on YouTube. It's great. They really bring in interesting um, astrologers, interesting points of view. S.J. Anderson's there a lot. I have just my little astro blog. You can go there, and I just, you know, I just, I really focus on the mundane, and I really focus on the um, eight phases of the moon, new crescent, first quarter, gibbous, full moon, disseminating balsamic, d disseminating third quarter balsamic, and then we're back to new again. It's 29 days. So that's the treasure mapping. Mm -hmm.